of the government. It loves you and wants to keep you safe and well. It even wants to make paying taxes, fines, and court costs easier for you. How? Well, you'll need to meet your straw man. He was born the same day you were. He looks like you, has the same name, and lives in your house, but you never knew he existed. You will have even paid his parking tickets for taxes. The worst part? He's been dead from day one. From every birth certificate, a legal personality, or legal fiction, is created with the same name to confuse little old you into thinking it's you. So, there is a human you and a paper you, or as it's commonly known, a straw man. So when it seems like government officials, court clerks, or the police are speaking English, they aren't. They're speaking legalese, designed to make you agree to verbal and written contracts without even knowing about it, all spun from Black's Law Dictionary. For example, when the police say, do you understand, you'll say, yes. What they are really saying is, do you stand under our authority? Oops a daisy, you just created a verbal contract with them. Oh, you clever government. Did you know that whenever you register something, you are handing over title to the person you register it with? That's right. Whenever you register something with the government, they assume it belongs to them. Registered your car? Super! Now you are the registered keeper of your vehicle, and the government can crush it when you don't pay your, ahem, <clears throat> straw man's taxes. Expecting a new bundle of joy? Well then, you need to register your little darling with a birth certificate. Then they can start the process all over again and create a new straw man for your little one. Isn't that great? So when Junior grows up, he'll be able to generate revenue just like you have. When you notify on your baby by signing the birth certificate, your child becomes a ward of state. And if the government doesn't like what you're doing, they'll assume it's okay to take the child away or make new rules for things they don't like. Not enough school? Smacking your child? Shouting too loudly? Then it's off to social services for the little one. When you get a bill, it's sent to you, but belongs to your straw man, not you. That's why bills, fines, and summons start with Mr., Mrs., or Ms. Sometimes you'll see your surname in capitals, just like on a gravestone. That's because your straw man is dead and just a silly piece of paper, created before you could comprehend or even consent to it. When you go to court, you represent your straw man. So you, the human, take on any costs, fees, taxes, and fines involved for the straw man. The human you doesn't even need to pay them. But you made a contract with the court by appearing on behalf of your legal personality or straw man. Just like the government knew you would. Confused? <laughs> well, don't worry. The government doesn't want you to know anyway. If you knew, you'd stop paying things like council tax and parking tickets. Because when you go to court, you are representing your straw man. You are you, alive and made of flesh and blood. Your straw man, or legal personality, is a piece of paper created from your birth certificate. And you think it's you. What a silly Billy. This is a certified true copy of my live statement of birth. You can get this by applying for it at the Registrar General. They'll give it to you. And it's very interesting because this is where it all began. This is the foundation document. All identification is generated from this document. And so if the foundation document is no good, anything that's made from it is no good. That means driver's licenses, health cards, everything. Now what they did here, this is exactly what he meant when he said, soon every American will be required to register their biological property. Now your parents didn't realize what they were doing when they filled this out, and these didn't exist before 1933. Birth records were recorded in scripture. And these only came into being in 1933 when they hatched this plan. They created a corporate fiction with a name just like yours. In doing this, they registered and monetized 
the spirit and soul of a living being. This denotes ownership. And when your parents were tricked into filling this out, they allowed your spirit and your soul to be monetized. And futures were sold on you. Spirit and soul. Now, this is my birth certificate. This is actually a share. See this red number? This A, I'm born in Canada. This is a class A share. Now, this is called a CUSIP number. And all securities require a CUSIP number. And that's what this is. And you are held as collateral to secure the debt which our government owes to international bankers. So you and me and all these people here are actually collateral. And we don't even own our lives. We are chattel. And we believe we're free. I made an application to the Registrar General and I got my original social insurance application. Now before they sent it to me, they put a little piece of paper over this before they photocopied it because my friend has his and they didn't block this out and when you hold it up you see Bank of Canada it is said that the best slaves are the ones who don't know that they're enslaved and we all have invisible chains on us and we don't know it what truth that you are a slave like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. We're talking about big bucks. We're not talking about hundreds of millions or even hundreds of billions now. We're talking about trillions of dollars. The obligation is immeasurable. Nobody can measure it. This door is wide open now. It's going to happen, whether you like it or not. Do you notice that they have the same amount of ink on them? Do you notice that they're made out of the same virtually worthless stuff? It's paper. Did you get it? It's paper. When we create money, we have created an instrument of value that has no value of its own. And it's just as expensive or inexpensive to print the 20 as it is to print the 1 in January of 1913, in December of 1913, he signed the Federal Reserve Act, bringing the Federal Reserve system into place in America and did what Thomas Jefferson said must never happen. He took the control of the money away from the people by taking it away from the Congress and gave it to a group of private individuals who have to pay taxes on the money they loan the government. 